I'm Chris. All right, everybody. Uh, I'd like to remind you all uh, that I may not have some fancy animations, but that's you know that's largely because with great power comes great responsibility, as as Uncle Ben said. So very important to get that corrected. Now let's move on here. So let's take a look. Let's go to our Warrior Horses site. Here's Julian. I'm going to drag you over here. Bye. Okay. Now one of the things we're going to talk about is some ways to get started here. Like how do you dive in? How do you get going? Right now, it's if you've got an existing list or you know you've seen some samples, maybe you start there, and that's a great way to start. Uh, but some of the other ways you might want to start are taking a look at what Microsoft puts out there. So in this case, we're going to add a new list. And we're going to add one of these templates, right? So the warrior horses, they are expanding. They need more warriors. Some of them just keep dying. It's horrible. So they need a recruitment tracker. Now, if you pick these, you'll notice we've got a preview here. And you'll see there's actually quite a bit of formatting, right, that comes in here. Some of them may not be obvious to you that this is formatting, but because the choices just kind of happen automatically now, but this is all formatting. So let's start with this recruitment tracker. We're going to use this template. First thing I'll tell you is remove this space, right? Make it recruitment tracker so you don't get an ugly URL with that percent 20 in it. We're going to create that. And there we go. Now you can see our URL here is beautiful. It has no ugliness in it. Um, and then we can just click this to add that space back in. Bam. All right, we'll give it a second. There we go. So there's a nice fun thing here. Now, the first thing we want to do is so we've got this kind of list going, but we want to come over here and we want to remove a couple of columns that we don't need. For instance, horses do not use phones. You guys may not have known that. Uh, so the nice thing about these templates is if you don't need it, get rid of it or add to it, right? No big deal. I'm going to remove both these phone screen columns. Just edit and I'm going to delete down here. Bye-bye. And of course, the horses actually have a rule that if you have a LinkedIn profile, you automatically don't get the job. So we're going to remove that one as well. All right, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, of course, our positions are going to be very different. So we're going to edit that. And so you see, by default, they've given kind of this list here. Now we want to change that to what makes sense for us, right? So we would hire some assassins, right? We could just type over there and hit enter to go to the next line. You know, maybe a battlefield engineer, right? And we'll add a, a mindless grunt. And of course, everyone needs customer support, so we'll keep that. But we don't need any account managers. We just X to delete that. Now we can set some colors here, right? So assassins will make those red, battlefield engineers uh, orange, minus grunts. Yeah, you get a nice blue. That looks lovely. Customer support, you get a green, right? And we can move these around by just grabbing this little thing here, right? And drag them around, put them in the order we want them. So very cool, all that. Now one of the things we can't do yet is edit that icon from here. But if we go ahead and just save our changes, you know, let's add in some data. I'm not going to make you watch me type in all of our candidates here. So let's edit in grid view here. And I happen to have it on another screen, so let me just grab all of that and copy one more down. Copy, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just paste. Oh, no! Does anyone else have this problem with a quick edit all the time? Come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So now we'll just paste all that in. So now we've got some data in there so we can start manipulating it, right? All right. Now that it's done saving, we'll exit this grid view. You'll see that it's got this stuff here. Now we mentioned this icon, right? What if we want to change those icons around? Because, you know, check mark for mindless grunt, that makes zero sense. First, let's zoom this just a little bit so we can see that. All right, so we can go in settings, we can format this column. And you notice that it's already got uh, kind of a design wizard set up here. So we can hit edit styles. And if we want to change that, we can just click here and go more styles. And then we've got a bunch of options here. Now, if you don't want one of these icons, and I definitely don't for mindless grunt, Right, you can use all sorts of icons, but you can't specify them here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to format this column. Now that we've got it set up the way we want, we use the design wizard to get it as pretty close to what we want. We go down to advanced mode, where we can see what Microsoft put together for us by using that little wizard. And this is, you know, lots of fun to look at. But let's a little bigger. We can hit Control F to just look for what we're looking for. We're going to look for icon. Oh, there it is, icon name. And so what we can do is we can just come over to say Flyken. So that's Flyken.io. You head over there and we're just going to look at uh, like the stuff category and we'll say, uh, you know, a mindless grunt, right? You can have this defect solid and we'll set this copy to get that name. And we'll go back here. And so we can see when position is mindless grunt, it's currently as the accept is the name of the icon. We'll put defect solid, All right? Battlefield engineer. Well, you know, why don't we do a construction cone? That sounds exciting. 
So we'll come back here, but you can see the nice thing is I'm not really writing a format. I'm just editing one they put together for me. So an assassin, yeah, drop a bud, if that makes sense. All right, we'll copy that, and we'll put that in for the assassin. And we'll keep the little mail icon for the uh, customer support. Preview that, looks great. Now we've got our nice icons. We didn't really have to do any real formatting, right? We just search for icon, and there we go. We've got it. Now, there are some cool things we can do here. Right, so let's save this off as a view for ourselves. So let's go ahead and save you as, and we'll just call this my interviews. All right, so I'm trying to track what interviews do I have coming up. So I'll hit save, and in order to do that, right, I might come over here and say, yeah, I only care about the ones where I'm one of the interviewers, right? So I don't care about little Sebastian or Sir Horsington the third, right? So I can do this filter, and you got this nice little thing here, this dynamic at me. I click that, and so it's going to automatically say. Whoever is looking at this view only show the ones where they are inside this group, right? So that's really helpful. And in fact, I'm going to then sort by the interview date, right? We'll go uh, older or newer so we can see what interviews are coming up, right? And then we're going to save this view. Just hit save you as and save. So that's cool. But what if I want to, you know, have a dynamic filter kind of like I do for interviewers on the interview date? So if I went to here, Ah, sadly, that is not here in this interface, so I have to go kind of old school here. I'm going to edit the current view. We'll see this old screen. I'm not going to really touch anything but down here to show items only the following is true. So this is what that did with that at me we saw. So now we're just going to say, and the uh, interview date is greater than or equal to, All right? We can say today, but now we want not just today. We want like the past couple of days as well, right? So we're going to say, you know, today minus two. That sounds good. All right, so then we just hit OK. That will save. And now we've got a nice view. All right, that's customized for that. And one of the cool things is I can make this a gallery. All right, so I pop it over to a gallery. Ooh, fancy. And now I can save this view again. You'll notice got a little star there. And I save it again to say that when you go to this view, it should be the gallery by default. So I'm going to do that. And now what if I want to change this around? Right, so I can again, I can go get some samples. I can jump in there and start editing that. Or I can say format current view, and you'll see I've got this nice card designer. Let's start with that. So we start with the card designer. The recruiter is always the same guy. We don't want to show that. All right, we'll show the candidate name, the position, share the progress. We don't really care when they applied. All right, we'll show all those interviews and we'll make sure we show with that nice face in it. So that's pretty cool. All right, we can even drag things around. So say we, we care more about progress, right? We'll drag that up there. And so, so I've got that kind of where I want it. I can choose to show the column names or not. Uh, I'm going to leave them in. I'm going to hit save. Looking good. But now I want to change it even more, right? So I got it pretty close to where I wanted without having to do a lot of work using their wizard here. But I can jump into advanced mode at any time. And again, I've got this giant thing they've put together. This is a great place. So whether it's the gallery or it's these other formats they kind of put together for you, this is a great place to learn what is available to you. Oftentimes things that aren't necessarily even documented yet will be in here. Um, you might see things like these extra classes. So you'll see one of the things that happens is when you click on one of these, anywhere you click, it opens up the item. And they are accomplishing that. They've got this button element, it's the very first child element, and they're just using this class SP card default click button. And then we've got the row action. What this does is actually positions a button over the whole thing. So you don't have to do that yourself. You can use this exact same piece here, and you could have that, you know, you could do default click, you can do share, you know, launch a flow, whatever you want. All right, so that's pretty neat. But you can also see really cool things like how they're using the colors and, and so on. And they've got all sorts of things for how the columns are laid out. You've got nice things to learn about the metadata, for instance, so we can see candidate name is really just the title field that they've changed the display name on. And we can see that here. So no matter what you change that display name, by using this little exclamation point here, we're pulling out the metadata from that column so we can access things like the display name. That's really cool. Now, in this one particular case, yeah, we don't care. We don't want to show that here. All right, so we're going to kill that. All right, we just kill that whole thing, preview it. Hey, that's cool. All right, and we come in here and we can see a couple of things like this SP card highlighted content. Like that's what's making it slightly bigger and, and bold. We're just going to get rid of that. Oh, we don't need that. And we're going to add some styles ourselves, right? And we're going to say, uh, make the font size 18 pixels. And we'll add, a, we'll add a comma there. And we'll add our font weight, right? And we'll put that at, say, 600. Sounds very exciting. Let's see. Ooh, so pretty. 
But the idea is we can start to customize it. So we kept all the labels for everything else, but we got rid of it for the top. All right. We can also see interesting things like this, right? Why is this underlined, right? So they've got a P tag, they got a paragraph element, and they're saying that's not allowed. This is an example of where checking out some of these uh, things they generate can clue you into things that aren't yet documented yet, aren't necessarily part of the schema. And but it also can be helpful to take a look at the schema. So if you're ever wondering what the heck this stupid thing is, it's what defines what's allowed here, right? And it's not stupid, so sorry. All right, we'll just open up a new window. I'm going to open that up. We'll go into the schema. And it's cool. So you can actually see what's in here. So this is for the tile view. The main thing we care about, though, is that formatter. You can just click this link. It'll take you right in. So you can see things like, oh, I can open context menu. That's cool, right? Here's all the different things I could do with that button. Or here's all the operators, right? So all the different expressions. And of course, you can check out the documentation. But sometimes this is a much easier way to check these things out. You'll notice the P tag is missing from the elements. That's the reason for that error. But so on. You can see all sorts of really interesting things by checking out the schema. So I encourage you to check that out sometime. So let's head back in here. We'll look at a couple more items here. And so let's go on down. So we're going to take a look at this interviewers, right? So we already know this view is, is already filtered to where I am one of the interviewers. I don't really need to see my own face every time, right? So I can come down here again. I can do a, a quick find for interviewers, right? There they are. So this is where they're displaying, right? And instead of saying the display name in this case, what if I want to put other interviewers, right? Because I don't care about seeing my own self there. So now I've changed the label. And you can see here, uh, we've got this whole section. And the nice thing is you can expand and collapse that, right? So if I just wanted to remove all of it, I could just do that and get rid of it. But in this case, they're going through, they're doing some really fancy stuff. So you're looking for some advanced ways to display this stuff. Check out this little section on, on how to handle these people with these previews. It's very neat. Uh, but we can edit some of that ourselves, right? So let's pull ourselves out. So we're going to say, uh, you know, if the length is equal to one, then just play a line because, hey, that makes sense, right? Because um, we, we're always going to have at least one. We know ourselves are going to be in there. And the other thing we can do then is we come down here to this main display of this object, right? And they're saying, hey, if it's over five, don't display them. Well, we can do that exact same thing, except we can also put an or. Like, hey, if it's over five, or we say the uh, person iterator dot email equals at me, then don't show it, All right? Oh, wait, we gotta put that in the right spot. Whoopsie. All right, ignore that. We'll put it up here in the actual uh, condition. That's kind of important. There we go. And we'll preview that. There we go. So sort of removing a little bit here. We got a, some weirdness with the name, but the idea here is you can pull yourselves out. All right, so now we're just editing this. We're starting there. That's really cool. And we got one more thing we're going to do here. And that's this interview date, right? That's cool. It's got this nice display value. If you haven't seen that yet, we'll just scroll up here to where we got the uh, interview date, right? If you use that display value, that's when instead of getting the exact date value, you get this nice friendly looking, right? So four days from now, yesterday, tomorrow, all that kind of stuff. What if we wanted to add a little bit to this? So let's say we want to take this and we want to add a little icon when it's coming up, right? Like when I need to start preparing, things I really kind of care about. So one of the things we can do is we can add this uh, lovely thing here where we're going to go in and we're going to say instead of text content here, let's instead we're going to break this up into children. All right, so we're gonna... Oops, children, children. And here, so children, so you can either have text content or you can have children. That's where we say Elm type. Uh, we'll make this a P as well, if that's fun. All right, and we'll just take our text content, which we'll just grab like this, and we'll actually just drag it down. Boom. So that's nice. Now we have our text content as a child element instead of being actual part of the, the main element, and that allows us to put it like another element here. It's this case, uh, we're going to add a span, right? So. Actually, let's make this one a span too, just for fun. Say Elm tie of span. Woo. And in this case, we're going to put uh, an icon, right? So we can just grab some attributes. I'm just going to grab those and stick them in there so you can not watch me type. I can always right click and format the document. Ooh, fancy. All right, so now I've got an icon. If we preview that, now I've got this little icon showing up here right next to our text. We didn't change anything else. So let's add some styles to that. You know, make that look a little better. So we're going to add style. Ooh. 
And we'll just add uh, like a vertical line, some padding, and all those fun things. There we go. Beautiful. Again, I'm going to format that document just because I like it there. So now that looks good, but again, I want to conditionally display that. So traditionally, we would write something like display, and you write an if statement, right? So you type equals, and you put if. Um, we're going to say, uh, say like the display value is nothing, uh, that we want to do nothing, right? We don't want to show it. So if the interview date display value equals nothing, then we'll say none. Otherwise, let's do in line, right? So that's one way to do it. So now we can make sure we're only showing this if it actually has a date. But what if we want to show it based on time? Well, normally we would do that by adding another condition here. We're going to look at now. So there's an at now. We're going to look at that compared to the interview date. And so you might write like number around interview date, new date, and then we're going to say, you know, minus 1,000 for milliseconds times 60 for seconds times 60 for minutes times 24 for I don't know, hours and times seven for our days, right? And we're going to do all of that. And we're going to write it out like that to make it obvious we're trying to say seven days because the giant number is not going to make a lot of sense to us. We're going to say greater than or equal to now. So this is kind of a complex way to do that. And you got to write the syntax correctly. There we go. We preview that. And do we have any that don't have a, a date? <laughs> I forgot to test it correctly. <laughs> I make myself laugh. Okay, but the idea here is you could do this. There's an easier way to do this now. And that's really what I want to show you. And that's so we can replace all of this with a nice new operator called add days. So we just put in our whatever date we want to add to. So in this case, we're going to say interview date. And we're going to say the number of days we want to add. In this case, we're going to say negative seven. We want to look seven days in the past. And then we can preview that. All right. So that one I've messed up the. Uh, but the idea is if you want to say within seven days, you want to say within five days, and so on, and you start seeing those show up uh, like that. Okay? All right, so add days is really helpful. And let's wrap up real quick. Okay, so the idea is to start, use the templates, use the designers, start with the samples, right? Really dive in. That's the best way to learn this stuff. And you're going to change them, you're going to break them, you're going to send them, you're going to mash them all up. That is the absolute best way to learn this stuff, learn what's available. Um, and it's a lot easier than trying to just, you know, start with empty JSON blinking cursor at your screen at you, okay? And then there's a couple of easier date math expressions that were just added, and that's this add days and add minutes. Um, so you just put in a date, and it will bring back the date with the appropriate amount of days or minutes added or subtracted. So to subtract, just put a negative number in there, okay? And finally, you can always check out the documentation or the samples. And there's a, all these videos and various demos and everything is all a nice playlist there for you as well. All right, and that's all I got for you. That was awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.